Hello, everybody. I'm waving. Um, hope you guys are all well. I'm going to try a different angle on this because I'm realizing that I am not skilled at the library hold and read kind of thing, but I will practice. I'm going to try to do a couple a couple of runs on this book, but so far I'm going to do this as numero uno. So today's book, so you're kind of looking over my shoulder as I read here. So today's book is called when Vegetables Go Bad by Don Gilmore and Mary Louise Gay. I picked this book up, I believe, when I was uh, working at a salon called Ferrer Young in Victoria. And I had a lot of friends that worked at uh, Rebart at the time. And I remember thinking this was just really funny because, um, yeah, there's a lot of vegetarians. <laughs> so here we go. Some bright colors. <clears throat> when vegetables go bad, which does sort of seem a little appropriate right now, a propos, um, in the sense of me trying to figure out, uh, yeah, props to any kitchen workers and restaurant owners out there because this whole like food management, food cost, food usage, food storage thing is, uh, yeah, I've always been pretty fortunate to just roll kind of every two or three days go shopping and not make big batches of stuff because I live by myself. Um, but that's not uh, the, the best way to be doing things right now. So yeah, learning curve and it's definitely a skill set. So here we go. When vegetables go bad. The trouble with Ivy was she wouldn't eat her vegetables. Eat your vegetables, Ivy's mother said, or you won't grow up to be big and strong. Ivy stared at the blue flowers that were painted on her plate. She began to count them. Do you want them to go bad, her mother said. Do you? Yes, Ivy said. Well, you're going to sit here until you finish those vegetables, young lady, her mother said, if it takes all night. Ivy stared at the vegetables. They were green and yellow and cold and damp. She would rather eat bugs. She stared at them for two hours and they got greener and yellower and colder and damper. <laughs> Ivy closed her eyes. She hoped that when she opened them, her vegetables would be gone. She opened her eyes and they were still there, though she thought they had moved. When her mother wasn't looking, she put all her vegetables in her napkin and stuffed it into her pocket. Finished, she said to her mother. There, she said, that wasn't so bad now, was it? No. <laughs> When she went to bed, Ivy hung her pants over the chair. The vegetables were still in her pocket. She turned out the light and went to sleep. Inside her pants pocket, a funny thing happened to the vegetables. They went bad. They began to sing. In your pants, we all turned rotten. All the green things you've forgotten. We've gone bad and we'll get worse. We'll follow you just like a curse. Singing is not my strong point. Apologies, guys. Whoa, turnip, dude. Ivy woke up and saw a turnip in the middle of her bedroom. It was almost as big as she was. I am a turnip, the turnip cried. I taste so good, the turnip lied. <laughs> oh my God, this is hilarious. Check these guys out. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. There was a carrot leaning against the dresser, cleaning his teeth with a knife. A group of green beans was filling her shoes with rocks. In her closet, a stalk of broccoli was drying on her clothes and stretching her sweater. It was true. They had gone bad. Vegetables! Ivy yelled. Or ved yeah. She sat up and looked around her room, her eyes adjusting to the dark. They had mushy faces and beady eyes. The carrot was green. The peas weren't. They sang. We've been sitting much too long. You won't grow up big and strong. <laughs> oh my God, these things crack me up. Oh my God. Asparagus. Asparagus peas. Oh no, what's happening? <laughs> Inside her bedroom was every vegetable Ivy hadn't eaten. There was the lettuce from yesterday's lunch and the turnips she had put on her brother's plate at Thanksgiving. There was an army of peas, a herd of cauliflower, a forest of broccoli, a group of asparagus spears waved from the corner of the room. I don't remember them, Ivy thought. We're the vegetables you wouldn't even try, they said. You just knew you didn't like us. I like you now, 
Ivy said weakly, their heads almost touched the ceiling. And what about us? The peas chorused. They were the size of basketballs. Too mushy, too small, too round, you said. <laughs> this guy with the, the ball cap here. See that? Oh, these are fun. Yeah, I think this is more for me than anybody else at this moment. <laughs> the vegetables moved towards her, crowding Ivy's bed. The turnip was now bigger than her mother. You called me nature's great mistake, the turnip said. He was bending over, his long finger touching Ivy's nose. You said I was too orange. You were too cold, the beans. We were too cold, the beans said. I was too warm, the lettuce said. Too yellow, too green, too old, too mean, too ugly and damp, too shriveled and brown, too mushy and small, too stupid and round, too much, too little, no room on your plate. You're sick, you're full, you're trying to lose weight. They're never in season. They give me the willies. The beans are boring. The salad is silly. I like that page. That was good. Oh, scary times. Here comes Mr. Turnip, right? The chorus grew louder and the vegetables drew closer to Ivy's bed. They were huge now. She leapt out of bed and sprinted between the legs of the turnip and out the bedroom door in her pajamas. The vegetables followed her at a gallop. Ivy raced down the stairs and shot out the front door like a rocket. She sprinted through the garden, down the street, and around the park. The beets were the size of cars. She could feel their hot vegetable breath at her shoulder. She could hear the pounding of their steps and the angry cries of the Brussels sprouts. You tried to feed us to your dog. Even he wouldn't eat you, Ivy shrieked. She ran down an alley, over a fence, through the schoolyard, and back to her street. The vegetables were gaining. The turnip was bigger than the garage now. Ivy flew through the back of her house, up the stairs, and into her room. The speedy yellow runner beans were right at her heels. Oh, this is so much fun. Ivy jumped into the bed and tried to get under the covers, but the beans were on her. She struggled with them, gasping for breath, wrestling at their waxy limbs. Rather eat bugs, would you? The bean said, taunting her. No, Ivy yelled. I like beans, especially yellow ones. I like peas. I love broccoli. When her mother came in, Ivy was on her bed, thrashing around, holding something she couldn't see and yelling loudly. What are you doing? Her mother asked. Let me see what's in your hand. Ivy opened her hand. Inside were three small, damp, cold beans. They were mushy and yellow. Ivy stared at them and then popped them into her mouth and swallowed them. Ivy's mother stared at her daughter. Go to sleep, she said. You don't even like beans. I love beans, Ivy said, especially yellow ones. Her mother gave her a kiss and turned out the light as she left. Ivy lay on her bed, her eyes wide open in the dark. She could see her pants hanging over the chair. She thought about the napkin full of vegetables in the pocket and knew she had to do something about it. She couldn't leave them there. She got out of bed and walked slowly toward her pants. She stood for a moment before reaching inside the pocket. It was empty. There was a crumpled napkin on the floor and out in the hall, she thought she heard, oh, we've gone bad and we'll get worse. <laughs> And there's the end. Yeah. All right. Well. Hi. That was longer than yesterday's, but it was fun. Thanks for checking in. Bye. Love you all.